Thank you for listening to the Cat Breeder Sensei Says podcast, the show that supports the reputable breeding of pedigree cats. This is your show host, April Catito, and in this episode, we're going to talk about the Adopt Don't Shop movement. We will get into all of this juicy stuff right after this short message. Do you want to learn how to become a successful breeder of pedigree cats? Now you can. For the first time ever, enroll in an online training course that takes you step-by-step through everything you need to know to get on the right track. Visit catbreedersensei.com to sign up today and use code PODCAST21 to get $25 off. Okay, we're back. Now this Adopt Don't Shop campaign was originally started to try to bring awareness to the public about the plight of homeless animals and to encourage people to adopt their pets from animal shelters or rescue groups instead of buying them from a breeder or a pet shop. They think that the sole purpose of a breeder is to mass produce animals and sell them for monetary gain. Now if you're a breeder you know that is not true. Sure, there are some people out there who are doing it just for the money, but let's apply the 80-20 rule, okay? Because it can be applied in most every single situation. So 20% of breeders probably are breeding cats and dogs for monetary gain. I don't even know if that's an accurate number, but for all intents and purposes, we'll use the 80-20 rule. So the phrase adopt don't shop was created by a nonprofit organization called Last Chance for Animals. Now the hashtag adopt don't shop is used pretty widely on Instagram and Twitter and it has definitely raised awareness and a movement for adopting animals from the shelter. Now in my opinion, there's a lot of ways to look at adopt don't shop and I have plenty of stories to go by to help me decide that maybe adopt don't shop doesn't work for everyone. Now here's some fun facts for you and this information came right from the ASPCA website. 2.5 million cats enter shelters every year. That's a lot of cats, right? To end up in the shelter. Out of those cats, 1.6 million get adopted out and go to new homes. 90,000 are returned to their owners, and 860,000 of them, unfortunately, end up euthanized. So, if 35% of households own a cat, and only 3% of cats in the total population are obtained from breeders, then where do the other 2.5 million cats that end up in the shelter come from? What I'm saying is 97% of the cats that end up in the shelter do not come from breeders. So, another fun fact, 42% of relinquished pets to the shelter are because of problematic behaviors, their new residence doesn't allow pets, or the cat has health problems that the owner couldn't handle. So in 42% of the cases, it sounds like cats end up in the shelter because of the owners. I can't see how this even relates to being a breeder. Now don't take my approach to this podcast offensively at all. I am all for adopting a pet. In fact, I worked as a volunteer with our local shelter fostering kittens, so I I know that side of it as well. So I'm uh, totally supportive of Adopt Don't Shop. What I'm in question of is why such the negativity against breeders. So they have this big event in our city once a year. I think it's usually in October, but it's a big adopt-a-thon and all of the shelters and rescue groups come together into this giant event in a venue and it's adopt a pet day and they have cats and dogs and puppies and kittens and anyone can go in there and adopt a kitten or an animal from this exhibition for free so I have a little bit of a problem with free stuff 
I think that when people get something for free, they don't value it as much as they do things that they pay for, even if it is a pet. Now, I'm not speaking of the masses here. I know that most people are happy to go into these events and adopt their pets and not be charged for it, and that would be the 80%. And then there's 20% of the people that uh, go to the events and adopt a pet, but they can't afford to take care of it, or it's not what they thought when they get at home, and guess where the pet ends up? Back at the shelter. So one of my theories about buying a pedigree cat from a breeder, a reputable breeder, is that people that pay for their pets usually have the means and the willingness to take care of that animal. And that means quality food, flea control, medical bills, you know, vet visits, emergency care if something comes up. They are already prepared to do that for the pet for the rest of its life. Pets cost money. They're not free. It takes money to take care of your pets. And I actually have, um, you know, the cost to own a kitten or to own a cat um, on one of the podcasts. And it's very interesting what comes up, all the expenses that you have to pay for when you own a cat. And that applies to cats, dogs, frogs, fish, any kind of pet that you have. It costs money. So I think before anyone adopts an animal who's going to be dependent on you to take care of him for the rest of their life, you should know that if something happens and you need to pay for some veterinary bills, even if it's on the weekend and you have to take them to the emergency room, which is very expensive, that you have the means to do that. And it's not unlikely that your pet will be at the vet and have an expensive medical bill at some point in their life. So I don't know, maybe, you know, giving pets away for free or like putting a sign on the side of the road that says free kittens and anybody can pick them up. That's probably not the best idea to find homes for these pets that, you know, either were in the shelter to begin with or will probably end up there anyway. That's kind of just a different look on the Adopt Don't Shop movement. So like I said, I'm not against it at all. So I don't want to be uh, misunderstood for, you know, coming up with a different point of view about Adopt Don't Shop. Uh, But as breeders, we have to be ready to take the attack from the Adopt Don't Shoppers. Uh, They are ultimately not friends with breeders especially online so anytime it, you're posting on social media about your kittens or your cats or your cattery you know expect to get some backlash from the adopt don't shop movement people the supporters of this who are totally against ever considering getting a cat or a kitten from a breeder whatsoever so they're super mad about breeders online and you know promotion of any you know pedigree cat period it's just everybody to them is a backyard breeder and nobody is deserving you know to even touch a cat if they're a breeder so i just wanted to kind of you know buff you up for that one so now maybe let's talk about why people choose to go to a breeder instead of adopting from a shelter or a rescue group. You know, and these are all things that maybe the adopt don't shop people don't think about. They are really only one-sided in their thought process. Well, you know, most people kind of are. And they don't look at it from the point of view of what if this is what the person really wants. And, you know, maybe I should just mind my own business. I don't know. So just like people who are dog people really like certain breeds of dogs for different reasons. It could be personality types. It could be the way they look. It could be the small dog, the tiny dog, the teacup dog, the big giant dog, the friendly slobbery dog. Whatever reason, you know, there's plenty of people who like pedigree dogs. 
uh, you know, specifically. The same people can be cat enthusiasts instead of dogs, because I'm kind of a cat person, not a dog person, and they prefer a pedigree cat. And there's definitely reasons to like pedigree cats. One of the reasons is that you can kind of know what to expect personality wise. So personalities are bred and carried on through generations of pedigree cats. For example, the Maine Coon is known to be highly social, even dog-like, a great family cat, and that all, you know, is true. That's, you know, in 80% of the cases that the Maine Coon fits that description. Whereas a Bengal may be described more as a very active and athletic cat who's very vocal and, you know, great with kids. And that, if that's what you want in a cat, then you, the best way to get it is to buy the breed of cat that has these personality characteristics. There's no way that you can do that with a cat that's coming from the shelter. You don't know what the personality is like of this cat until you get it home and have, you know, spent a year with it. Another reason people choose pedigree cats over well, shelter cats is because breeders, responsible and reputable breeders, will actually do lots of health testing and genetic testing and DNA testing and health screening on their breeding animals before producing any kittens. Now, what that means is that it was selective breeding, so the breeders are choosing the healthiest example of this breed to keep the lines going. And that is something that you cannot get from the shelter. You also don't know um, when you adopt a kitten from the shelter who the parents are, what they look like, if there was any health or genetic conditions in those genes, was it inbred? I mean, you just don't know these things about shelter kittens. And with a pedigree cat, you have a pedigree to look at. You can actually check the inbreeding coefficient right there on the pedigree. And you should have test results from the breeder to see, you know, has this cat been pre-screened for good health? So that's one of the things that you can get from a breeder that you can't get from the shelter. Another reason people like pedigree cats is for their physical characteristics. So if I'm really a lover of a Devon Rex, well then I want a cat that looks like a Devon Rex. I'm in love with that breed. I want, you know, the wavy hair. I want the distinct features of the face and the eyes and the skin and the everything. I, I want a cat that looks like that. And if you want, are ready to adopt a pet, you can't always find that at the shelter. Now, some will argue that pedigree cats are in the shelter too. So why don't you get one from a shelter or a rescue group? Well, that's a good point, but it's not very often that you see pedigree cats in the shelter. And even if you do, you may not know what their background and their pedigree is. Some people like to buy pedigree cats because they like the hobby of showing cats. Now, you can get a household pet and take it to the cat show, but maybe that's not your thing. You want a pedigree cat and you are highly detailed and you like all the fine little details about a certain breed of cat. Maybe you like the Persian and you want to you know, buy a show quality cat that you can take and be competitive with. And that's actually a thing. There's people that um, show cats as their hobby and travel with their cat and the cat enjoys it and they enjoy it and they win stuff and that's you know one of the joys that they get out of life. Who is someone that's an adopt don't shop activist, who are they to say you can't enjoy the fun of showing and competing with a pedigree cat? I mean, you know, you can't take that away from someone. In fact, you can't take any of these things away from people. We all have the right to choose where we get our pets from. And what really kind of angers me is that the adopt don't shop movement, which I am supportive of, 
talks badly and negatively about people that buy from breeders. And I just wish that they didn't do that. It's, you know, buying from a breeder is not a bad thing. Uh, yeah, you've got the 20% of bad breeders out there. That happens no matter what. I mean, you have 20% of bad pet owners too. What about that? You know, what are we going to do about that? Um, also, I've never been in a shelter and looked in a one of their little cagey things and saw an entire litter of Siamese pedigree kittens. So what I want you to know from this podcast is that don't let people rain on your parade. Be responsible, be reputable, make all the right choices for you and your cats and your cattery and you'll get noticed. You'll get noticed by the people that want to be a part of your process. You may get noticed by the Adopt Don't Shop group too, but that's okay. I gave you that warning so you know that you probably will encounter them at some point. So the Adopt Don't Shop is really all about perspective. There's good solid points to both ways of looking at adopting a pet. Either way, adopting a pet should be a wonderful milestone in everyone's life. Like almost as fantastic as bringing home a baby. I mean, not that big, but you know, a new pet. It's going to be there for a long time, for a very long time. You have a new pet to take care of. So it, everyone should have a choice on where this pet comes from. And we shouldn't feel guilty about being breeders and giving the enthusiasts for our breed what they want and what they're highly enthusiastic about and passionate about. That's what we do. We preserve and protect this breed for the people who love them. Be proud and be confident about the role that you play for these pedigree cats. Well, without reputable breeders, these amazing animals wouldn't have anyone to protect their breed. And, well, that would be sad. Thank you for listening to the episode today. Don't forget to subscribe to our show so you don't miss the next episode of Cat Breeder Sensei Says. And share this podcast with your friends on social media and let them know that we're out there. Remember, we're here to make a positive impact on the world of cat breeding. So help us at, by spreading the word. Take care and we'll see you next Thursday.